Across the vastness of America's Indian reservations today, an enemy as relentless as any the Indians have met before is exacting a terrible toll. Added to the well-documented plagues of poverty and alcoholism has come a killer that rivals the white settlers who drove the Indians from their lands in the 19th century. Now, many descendants of the great Native American warriors face a stark choice. Excuse me. Oh, hello. The dialysis machine three times a week or death. I didn't even know I was sick. I didn't know I was ill. I felt just fine. I felt good. <laughs> Darlene Arapaho Elk and so many of her friends are fighting diabetes. I wished I'd known yesterday what I know today. Then I probably wouldn't be sitting here. Nearly half of all Native Americans over the age of 40 have diabetes. But perhaps as alarming to health officials here is the spread of the disease among younger Indians who should be fit. Even some elementary school children have been diagnosed with the disease. How you doing today? Good. Good. At the main hospital on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota, Dr. David Mulder deals with young but chronically overweight patients, tailor-made for diabetes. And you know that we emphasize watching your diet, you know that we emphasize exercise. But for the most part, Native Americans are not heeding that advice. They're denying it. They're only lying to themselves. You need to be truthful to yourself and take care of, care of yourself today so you don't become a diabetic tomorrow. In a word, the average Indian's diet is awful. <laughs> Heavy on fried foods, sweet drinks, starches, and a hefty side of fat. recent Sioux Tribal Festival on the Pine Ridge Reservation, the scope of the problem was in plain view. For years, the federal government has given excess farm commodities, cheese, meat, and bread, to the reservations, but it's seldom been the healthiest of menus. The people received it, they ate it, and no one really thought about it. A trip through the one big grocery store at Pine Ridge shows shelves heaving with snacks and soda pop. And, almost as an afterthought, some fresh produce tucked away to the side. Many Indians see it all as little more than a federal government conspiracy to finish the job the cavalry started. It still just boils down to we're, we're a problem. You know, the Indian people are a problem. How do we get around handling this problem. Well, the easiest way was, let's put them out on the reservations. They're out of sight and they're out of mind. Tim Gallego runs the Lakota Journal. I mean, overnight you took and, and changed the people from active warrior hunters who lived on very uh, rich protein f uh, f food and, uh, and uh, put them in an inactive status, took away your guns so they couldn't go out and hunt, and then you put them on fatty, starchy foods. When Gallego refers to inactive status, he's talking about the 75 to 90 percent unemployment that often afflicts the reservations. It leads to a sedentary lifestyle maintained by government handouts that are often spent on a cheaper but less healthy diet. Life expectancy here is just a bit longer than Haiti's. The federal government runs a $4 billion a year Indian health care program, but the professionals on the ground here say it's not nearly enough. We're always short of money every single year, um, but part of the problem is, is also recruiting. Hardship and low pay on the reservations keep qualified people away. John Yellowbird Steele is president of the Pine Ridge Reservation. Do you have enough doctors? Uh, no, we don't. Nurses? No, we don't. Pharmacists? No. I've been on the entire weekend, and I'm exhausted. I've had about seven hours of sleep in about three days. A long 30 miles away from the hospital in the reservation town of Porcupine, Susanna Killsback can easily point out the diabetics in her neighborhood. Okay, there's one that lives here. He's a young guy, and then there's one at this blue house. Then you just go down, and then there's a there's few more that live down that way, and then there's some more up on the middle row, and then there's some on top. So there's more people in this community with diabetes than without? Yeah. Susanna is a diabetic herself. A couple of years ago. I never really thought of it, because, see, I lost my, mo my mother to the complications of diabetes at the age of 44. She was alive today. She would have been 58. And I didn't, I didn't know what it was. 
I didn't know what diabetes was. I used to be a big guy, 237 pounds. Neither did her father, who now spends his days in that wheelchair, basically waiting for the next dialysis. Diabetes ruined the circulation in his leg and forced the amputation. His fate is not uncommon here. For Susanna, a single mother, the mental, physical, and emotional burdens have at times threatened to overwhelm her. It's just a lot of negativity, and sometimes it gets to me. It gets to me because I know people could, I know we could get, be, get together and all fight against this disease. I just know we can, but it's just so people are so, their lifestyles are so set in a certain way that they're, they're used to it and they don't want to change. But as we shall see, some do. degree heat on a recent Saturday in Pine Ridge, Mary Tobacco was practicing what she preaches. We have to become more active. You know what, if people start exercising and just becoming more active, it doesn't have to happen. It just doesn't have to happen. We don't have to build more dialysis centers. Mary is a Lakota Sioux who is one of two health educators on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. We had to kind of learn a new lifestyle. Mary, whose sister has diabetes, supervises a fitness center in Pine Ridge. Are there a lot of these places on the reservation? There aren't. There are two. There are two fitness centers for the public, and this is the first one we've we've ever um, opened. And it's not air conditioned. Probably in New York City, you have a fitness center on every block in the city. We have 38,000 people on a reservation that's 50 by 100 miles, and we have two fitness centers. Still, Mary believes she is having an impact. We have a lot of young kids that come in here, a lot of teenagers, and that's a good thing, because they're keeping it um, in their life right now, and they're making them part of their life. Oh, come in. In fact, it's hard to avoid hearing about diabetes on the Indian Reservation. At the Pine Ridge radio station, there's a weekly program on diabetes prevention, broadcast in the Lakota dialect, and in English. Good morning, Harvey. What we're doing with this diabetes project and beginning to identify, you know, these, these children at an earlier age is something that's really positive. On the same weekend we talked, the, diabetes claimed a cousin of Richard Ironclouds, while a grandson was born the same day. Visit my grandson, and he's really healthy, and you know he really, really looks good. His name is Leroy, Leroy Austin Ironcloud. Ironcloud and believes starting was, with the very young is the best way to turn the disease around. He runs a program to increase diabetes awareness. We have to be real um, strong, you know. We have to be spiritually strong, you know, we have to uh, go and uh, take care of ourselves, you know, take care of our spiritual selves, our physical selves, and our emotional selves. Thanks to his efforts, all 16 schools on the Pine Ridge Reservation are now testing their students for diabetes, all the way down to kindergarten. I think if we can spot them earlier and begin working with whole families, I think that we can really make an impact on this disease. Yay, have you eaten yet today? No, I'm going to eat or something. You ready? 488. There are signs that Iron Cloud's work is paying off. At the recent festival in Pine Ridge, amid all the fried foods and soft drinks, stood an Indian Health Service stand offering free tests for diabetes. And people were lining up to have their blood tested. They just started putting these stands at such events three years ago. We're just encouraging people to drink lots of water, a lot more than pop, okay? Another sign that people are at last fighting back against diabetes can be found in the prairies of the reservation, where a once familiar animal is roaming anew. The return of the buffalo to the reservation has come just in time. Its leaner meat is considered much healthier than the fast food Indians have come to rely on for decades. It's got to help. You know, if, if the people would get back to some of the things that uh, made us the people we were 100 years ago, uh, it, can't, it can't hurt at all.
we are taking responsibility and so they brought the buffalo meat back and um, if that's going to help us change our lifestyles and help us make better choices then um, I think it's very, very important. Tim Gallego sees another important trend developing. We're getting Indians in, in as doctors and I think probably even as important we're getting Indians in as administrators of health programs that affect us. And so that in itself, and that's just happened in the last four or five years. Back at her neighborhood, Susanna Killsbag is working with Richard Ironcloud and Mary Tobacco to reach out to diabetics and their families, spreading the word that the disease must be beaten. She starts at home. And I have to talk about it to my kids because I don't want them to go through that, and I'm not going to go through that either. I'm not going to put myself in a wheelchair. All of this self-betterment talk is coming too late for Taylor Blue Legs. Seriously ill, he has driven 120 miles round trip to the nearest dialysis clinic for five hours of treatment three times a week. How long have you been diabetic? Indeed, for an entire generation of older Indians, the disease is probably too far advanced to speak of recovery. Darlene Elk and the other regulars at the dialysis clinic know that, but are not willing to just accept it. We all can make those changes, and we need to make those changes, if not for ourselves, then for our children, and hopefully their children and their children and the future. of. This is Dean Reynolds for Nightline on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota.